This video brought to you by Gamefly. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon for a 30-day free trial. Stick around to the end for more details. Hey there, Canonites. Welcome back to Halo Canon. Today we're going to finish off Halo Wars right in time for Halo Wars 2. And for this final level, I am very happy to be joined by Alex Wayfield, a.k.a. Horospis. Uh, he's been on this channel before. I've talked about his blog a lot. Just hit my desk. And, you know, he does some great work, some great theory crafting. So say hi. Hello. <laughs> and... Sorry, I'm also, just really enamored by this cutscene. I know, <laughs> this is the greatest cutscene in the history of Halo. More this or was like the ultimate sort of catharsis for people who, uh, you know, had been reading the books and were mm -hmm. like, oh, it'd be really great if we got to see what, you know, Spartans in action were like. Because Bungie never really showed that in the cutscenes. Their philosophy was gameplay. Yeah. But, yeah. And until Halo 4, this was pretty much all we had. Yeah. The number of like montage videos that would use this, like <laughs> just like snaps of this scene. I think I've talked about it in other videos, but anytime I like e I'm editing something and this cutscene, I have to use something from this cutscene. I basically just have to stop and watch the whole thing every time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's it demands been a that. It does. Occasionally, I have to watch it a couple times because it's like you know, like when I was doing the Red Team video recently. You know, I needed some of this stuff, and I had to get a few different scenes from a few places, and <laughs> it's just like, ah, oh, God, I gotta watch it again. <laughs> I mean, you know, people tend to bring up the whole sort of thing, like, oh, the elites just charging there with their sticks is like, that's a bit silly, and you know, granted it is, but yeah. I think I think Halo comes from that angle every now and then, you know, it's got a little bit of sort of that suspension of disbelief for rule of cool. Everywhere. Yeah. I mean, like Chief riding down on the space pickle, you <laughs> don't really get more over the top than that. Yep. Uh, Arbiter. Oh, and he's down. Yep. They spoiled this in a um, trailer. Really? That one trailer that I I don't know I'm sure it was official, but it had the Transformers soundtrack playing over it. The <laughs> <laughs> it, it had like four minutes of campaign gameplay, and it showed that. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, let's just show you our main villain dying. <laughs> <laughs> then again, they did that with Halo Five as well. Well, not yeah. the main villain, but you know, we won't go into that. We've been there. Yeah. I'm still, like, really on the fence about that. Like, oh, it would have been great to have more Jewel, but he was not handled well, like, at all, pro even mm. prior to Halo 5, in my opinion. Mm. Like, I didn't care for him at all in the book, in the Kilo 5 trilogy, and, like, I was initially stoked to see him in Halo 4's Spartan Ops, but, you know, his involvement was just in cutscenes, and then it's like, okay, I just, I don't care anymore. Like, Merg Vol, I found, or Parg Vol, sorry, I found more interesting because you actually got to hunt him down. But. Mm -hmm. And then he was just sort of like a standard elite general. Yeah, well, then that became, <laughs> became pretty disappointing at the end, too. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know. I personally really like. He was the be most bearable thing in the Kilo 5 books for me, um, his whole story. And I was excited to see him in the games. And tri I really wish they kept his black armor design as well from uh, the Halo 4 art book when he was called just the Black Elite. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, it really felt like they missed some opportunities with him. Some A lot. Really, yeah. Like, Halo 5 is kind of that nail in the coffin. Pun not intended. <laughs> Literally. I didn't mean that. Yeah, like, oh, wait a minute. Oops. But, yeah, just even prior to that, he just kind of... He was not handled very well. Stop building shit, damn it! I'm trying to build shit too. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh. See, like, yeah, when I talk about him, I've talked about him a lot in some of my sort of pieces, is I tend to come at it from the angle of, look at what we could have had. This is yeah. what it could have been. And Those pieces yeah. are very, very good. Mm. Like, 
Yeah, you definitely. I don't agree with everything you did in your Halo Five, uh, like what could have been, but there's definitely some really good stuff in there um, about the handling of Cortana specifically, but even just some other stuff. So mm. you can always look back and wonder what could have been. It's like you look at it and it's like, uh, you know, they were almost there. They mm -hmm. had a bit of it. Like Halo but Five in general, it, just could have been better if you they just cut out Blue Team entirely from the gameplay <laughs> yeah to be honest they should have made it two games i would have been totally okay with that if you, it feels like that's what they were going like it feels like i yeah. would not be surprised if the next game wasn't halo 6 but it was like you know like if, if halo 5 was basically assassin's creed 2 because that that's another game that felt like really incomplete when i first played it and then mm. like i like to the point i actually ret uh sold off my copy and then brotherhood came out and i'm like or it wasn't even brotherhood it was like when uh, revelations was announced i'm like okay i better go back and actually finish this because revelations looks good and then you know played brotherhood it's like oh hey <laughs> this is exactly what was missing from the end of assassin's <laughs> creed I, I would love to find out that that's what 343 is doing i don't think that's going to be the case but no yeah it just really feels like they had to truncate the story because from what we were told back in uh, 2014 when the Master Chief Collection was being advertised, you know, the Halo 2 anniversary bookend cutscenes, Bonnie Ross said, would lead directly onto the doorstep of Halo 5. Yep. But those scenes aren't canon anymore, essentially. Yeah. So you could argue like, the second the second one has, uh, is like a loose canon, but yeah, the first one, not so much. Yeah. So it's... I'm not one of those sort of like conspir cons conspiracy theories who are like, oh, there was this huge change in development. They had to rewrite the entire thing. Like, yeah, no, no. no. Game, like, game stories have to be rewritten on the fly all the time. Yeah, it's, like the thing is like, it's like, it's usually when people say like, it's like a Destiny level rewrite. It's like, no, that's where, no. like there were rewrites. But I think the way is it from my own conversations and what I what is publicly out there, I think like by the time they got into actual production, they had a pretty solid idea of what they were going to do for the final for the rest of Halo Five. Yeah, I think a lot of the incomplete nature actually stems from the fact that you know the the whole switch from um, the Reclaimer trilogy to a Reclaimer saga because that's what Halo Five feels like. It feels like a stretched out like opening act to a full game. It does because it just it doesn't follow up on anything Halo Four set up. It feels like its yeah. own thing. Yeah. And, even, and it barely even follows up on anything it sets up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, we'll see where it goes. But yeah. my sort of enthusiasm for where that's going isn't, um, it's not present. Yeah, it's, it's not there. It's not where it was once no. it was. Again, the whole sort of what could have been kind of angle yep. comes to mind. Right, I have been contributing like nothing to this gameplay so far. I've just been Not going really. around menus like, oh, well, what is fine. he? What is he in doing? Uh, I've researched a canister shell. That's that's happening. Hey, that worked. Yeah, that's good to have. Yeah. Do you know? Um, I, I guess we can. By the time this goes out, um, Halo Wars Two will probably be out. No, I imagine. this is going to go out on Wednesday. So on it'll, Wednesday, it'll still be for pre Halo. But so you can talk about the stuff that will be available to the public on that which is the first four levels yes um they're good to 130 just as a level title and oh, no man. spoiler that um, mission was uh, like uh, this halo wars game this first one i love it but i can't stand the campaign's gameplay i hate so many of the levels <laughs> I never Halo hated them, but they're not exactly the most engaging sometimes. No, they're not. They're not. This is this one stands out as sort of like an exception to that, which is why I selected it when you asked me, oh, what <laughs> level do you want to do? Not only because it's the longest and I wanted to like, you know, steal all of your time, but because this is the one mission that I'm like, I, I can get excited about it. Like the one where there's the flood and you've got you've got like eighteen minutes to rescue those three squads. My god, that was awful. But yeah, so um, Halo Wars 2, fortunately, its campaign gameplay is really enjoyable. Like, some of the set pieces in there were fantastic. It's themed very similarly to Halo 1, 
and kind of a bit of Halo 4. Just like the whole thing feels like a mixture of Halo 1 and Halo 4. Um, 130 is where you've got Alice, who at the end of the first mission sort of uh, sacri- not sacrifices herself as in dies, but she sort of like gets out the Warhog. She tells Red yeah. Team to like, you know, get to the portal so you can go back to the Spirit of Fire. And then and- pulls a chain gun out of her ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what spartans can do isn't it apparently that's, yeah I, I like that and i think that I would like, have been useful against atriox i'm just yeah, gonna definitely. say <laughs> imagine seeing that in a cutscene that'd be brilliant yeah. i would love to see that in a cutscene but yeah um, it's like a special sort of spartan to ability that sets them apart from the other generations yeah but um where was i what was i talking about was i talking about uh, level something? design level design <laughs> yes yeah. um which I say not as a level designer, but um, yeah, one three zero's theme is like a prison break. It, rem- it reminds me kind of of uh, Grave Mind or Truth and Reconciliation. You know the parts where you've got to rescue the Marines. Yeah, it feels like that translated into an RTS, but done really well, so that it doesn't feel like you're like this should be a first person shooter level. It feels natural for oh yeah, it's an RTS. Like when I first. I first heard about that the level concept they were going to go for there, um, basically through leaks. And when I first heard about like this, uh, like that the basic idea of that level, I'm like, mm, I can't really imagine that working too well. It doesn't like yeah. on paper. It doesn't sound like it would work out that well. No, so I have the same. This reaction. sounds like a yeah. It sounds like a, a first person shooter level, but it was executed really well. And the tension like towards the end of that level is just fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I've just walked my Spartans over to where the Scarab is, which was a <laughs> that bad, is a, yes, bad that is a very bad idea. Do you remember the order in which we have to open these? Because there's a uh, every yes. time I played this mission, I've so. had to look at a diagram, just be like, I can't remember. So it's like these two, and then I think. Let me see. I think it's yeah the uh, these two like starting with the one directly across from us, and then uh, the two like this, and then the two like this. I mean, really, it doesn't matter a whole lot. It works in parallels, then. Yeah, just, it's just yeah. the par- as long as you hit the parallels, that's really what matters. Okay. God, I just, I really love the visual design of this game. Mm-hmm. And the music design, and just like, so much about it is, it's a sort of like visual and sonic precursor to 343 stuff in a lot of ways, but it also honors the bungee designs really well as well. Mm-hmm. I've, said, I've said a couple, at least once before, that you could almost consider this 343's first work. Yeah. Just because a lot of the Halo franchise team, as it was at the time, uh, worked on this. Bonnie Ross specifically, actually. Mm, no, I made that argument as well. And Frank O'Connor was in all the uh, the Vidocs as well. Yeah, he was uh, Bungie, Bungie's uh, liaison to 343. Uh, three, three, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, I, I almost said Creative Assembly uh, the, the second time. No, uh, Ensemble Studios. God damn. Rest in peace. Yeah. You know they uh, they actually design they designed the first ever RTS that I played, which was Age of Mythology, which I still oh, like nice. to go back and play to this day. And you know, whenever when I found out that they were making this, that they were the ones making Halo Wars, I was like, oh, you know, that got me excited because I'm not I'm not, not I'm not RTS savvy particularly. Mm. Um, and I, I like my comfort zone when it comes to a genre that I'm not too familiar with. So when I found out that they were designing this, it was like, yeah, that's good. I think they did a good job. It's oh, controversial. Yeah, fantastic. Because it's, you know, a console RTS. It was, um, you know, a bit overly simplistic in areas, but I don't think it really needed to be anything more than what it was. Mm-hmm. Like- I said it before, and I'll stand by stand by what I said. Stand by it. It's the best playing uh, RTS on console, or it's the it plays better than any other RTS on console. 
Yeah. At least in my experience. It's fluid and responsive in its simplicity, which, um, you know, has carried over to Halo Wars 2, but not quite to the extent that I would have liked in some regards. So, for instance, if I select all units right now, I can cycle through them at the tap of a button with the right trigger. And I can still do that in Halo Wars 2, but it take, there's like a 0.5 second delay between sort of jumping between each unit, whereas on this, it's instant. And I kind of wish that Halo Wars 2 had kept that. You know what? I had no idea that you could cycle between units like that. <laughs> <laughs> I never played any of the tutorials. I've managed over the last eight years. <laughs> oh, God. I, I never did ah. any of the tutorials. I never paid any attention to them. Like, <laughs> who the fuck needs tutorials? I'm a man. Oh, you already made an Arab fad. <laughs> Screw that. I did, because I have one grand strategy in Halo Wars 1. Can you guess what it is? Vultures. Nope. Hornets. Hawks. Hawks. I love hawks. Okay, hawks. Hawks are like, you know, better than the Forerunner saga. And, you know, coming from there, <laughs> that, that, that means That's saying something. something. Yeah. <laughs> Hawks are the greatest thing ever. Just, you know, how angry you could, you used to be able to make people in those early multiplayer games back when this game first came out. It's like, oh, he's gone from an army of hawks because nobody like at first really knew how to counter with Wolverines. They're just like, oh, I'm going to resign the game now. That was my sort of like power fantasy with this game is, you know, that short period where I knew what I was doing. Let's pull back just a bit. Imagine playing this in first person, though. Like, oh my god, that would be insane. The closest I can think of is two betrayals in Halo 1, which mm -hmm. is still one of my favorite what missions ever. What the fuck? <laughs> my what tank, else? I don't know what the hell it did, but it like it just made the oddest decision in how it was going to... By the way, your uh, tank is getting hit by a Loka. Oh, so it is. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess my tank must have like traveled across the light bridge and just made like the dumbest decision in the history of mankind. It made Halo 5? Ah. Okay, second second <laughs> worst decision in the history of mankind. Uh, sorry, that was too easy. Was I too know, easy. no, I don't, I can't blame you. <laughs> I can't blame you. <laughs> no, as much as I complained about the game, you know, it's still, you know, it's still... It's fun to play. It's, it's, it's just... It's still a good game. <laughs> Yeah. It's just, it's, un there's just some unfortunate aspects about it. Some very unfortunate aspects about it, indeed. In a lot of areas, which I mm. truly hope 343 will, you know, improve on in future installments, yeah. because things like campaign theater and stuff like that, you know, basic features from yeah. the previous. So people like, love those. I love those things, and I want to see. I can back. kind of understand why it was removed in Halo Four, just because of uh, the quick time events. Yeah, but it, in Halo being so new as well. Yeah, like I don't know if you've ever seen some uh, somebody um, has put like put together a video like what those things look like in third person, and it is yes, not pretty it. to put to put it mildly. <laughs> At the same time, it's kind of like you know. Why hide that, really? Yeah. I, I kind of like I like it when people are sort of straight up with me and saying, like, you know, okay, you know, this doesn't look that great. This could be better. And I don't know, you know, it's the same reason why I'm sort of, like, annoyed at um, when we've got 10-second death barriers when we try to break out of levels. It's, it's a fun thing that a lot of people like to do. And, you know, when it happens by accident... I don't like it when people try to control where and when the fun happens in a game. Mm. Like the early Halo games themselves, you know, they've got whole wiki articles about like how you can vacation off the Pillar of Autumn and walk around in areas you're not supposed to go to. That's fun. I love doing that. Oh, and yeah. it's become harder and harder over the years, not just in Halo, in lots of games, because developers are... You know, I, I can see it from from their perspective why they're like, oh, you know, you, we don't want people doing this or that. But at the same time, it's sort of like, 
but it's fun. Just mm -hmm. just let let me do it, please. If only. That's not my most articulate argument that I've ever made, but you know. Yeah. Ooh, thrasher forms. Like, I think the worst is just the the soft barriers, the soft kill barriers they do. Yeah. That's, at least hard barriers you can try and phase around. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it started in Reach, if I remember correctly. And yes, it did. And yeah. it unfortunately has carried over ever since. It has. I didn't count, I encountered them a lot less in Halo 5, but I think they're still in there. Yeah, I think they've gone with more sort of like hard barriers where, you know, more, yeah. invisible walls and stuff. Because of the clamber mechanic and all that, it makes it yeah. a lot easier in theory. Right. I'm now you should be able to build a base. <laughs> now I should be able to start spamming some hawks. There you go. The Covenant are just sort of like tech. Oh, damn it. sticking a bunch of their guys over here There's, and they're just sort of like not doing anything. Damn it. Come on. Oh. Okay. Oh, what happened there? Uh, there's a bot. There's a Whoa, what thing. Happened? What's going on with the base pieces here? It the, the ba this thing was doing that was bombing it, so I just I destroyed it. So Did you that, see how the pieces were all sort of flying around and glitching out a bit? Oh, I didn't. It didn't show up. I, like I saw a bit of the expl like the t the start of the explosion, but that was about it. Like for about seven seconds, they were just sort of like rolling around, kind of like in a weird sort of physics malfunction that you get in the other games. It was weird. Nice. We should probably start opening these interlocks, shouldn't we? Um, I usually wait till the very end because, like, I said, it, uh, you have to do like the opposite sides to get them to work. Yeah. So, like, at the earliest, we'd have to make our way at least over here in order to. Or actually, hold on. Where is our starting point? Yeah, it's not helpful because the okay, so uh, the arrow this one... sends us. Over okay, so, to like sort of one yeah. so basically the next place. area we can start opening interlocks if we want to. Yeah. Because the, there's this other place here where it says activate interlock. It's like, okay, yeah, but the game's telling me to go o to go over here. Oh, you lost a you lost a hawk. No. <laughs> there be, are more. It will be replaced. I think I just cancelled your supply pad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thus ended a friendship. <laughs> oh, that's it. No more. We're done. <laughs> oh, these bloody flood launches. I know. I... I'm about to lose a hawk, too. Oh, no. Very sad. I thought Very I was. Sad I guess not. Too. Yeah, I'm not. On my back. Yeah. Right. Shall we activate this this interlock? Uh, if it's ready to go, then yeah. It is. And I, think. I will head back to our base, and I think I should be able to. I got to get a human presence in front of it. Hold on. <laughs> Oh wait, there it goes. Never mind. Had you already opened it? <laughs> I did, yes. Oh, okay, that explains it. Uh, I'm looking at like you know just the middle structure, and it really just like the Forerunner architecture. I know I'm someone who bangs on a lot about Forerunner architecture and various things that I write. It's like this is so reminiscent of you know what we end up seeing in Halo Four and Five. Mm-hmm. As you argued, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, warrior servant world and all. Although you know, I'm kind of you know meh about seeing that sort of appear everywhere now. That sort of uniform mm -hmm. style of Forerunner architecture. Like, it made sense in four. They did make some effort to sort of differentiate it a bit in five, but it is starting to feel like it's popping up everywhere, and they're not sort of saying, "Okay, let's recreate." This builder architecture we saw in Halo 3, uh, or in the original trilogy. Oh my god. Hey, I'll just waste the last two on you.
Bam. Scarabs are fucking tough. <laughs> Base under attack. Oh, what now? Just like these guys here. They're just sort of like sitting around, not doing anything. Imagine. Hey guys, like... should we uh, should we go help our fellow, <laughs> our guy, or help help those guys? No, no, no. We have to protect this specific spot. Enemy and there's just like this one sentinel dude in the middle, just chilling. Oh. You know, there is a locust coming to bother me. All units. He's just sat there thinking. No, Man, now he's know, got... the oh, hey, there's a covenant was... base. The master builder was kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit, just a wee bit. Maximum population. We can't reproduce anymore. Oh. No, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> Look at my glorious art. Jesus, that is just beautiful. It's not quite like, you know, 50 out of 50 filled with mm. just works, but, uh, you know, it's still nice. Yeah. Oh, I wasted all of our um, Mac shots and... Um, well, I think we have, ind we have independent uh, supplies. I think it's shared, I'm not sure. So I just, I, I re very recently shot my own, so if you shot some, then yeah. either it re Okay. Hit the interlock on this side. Another interlock is down. And fall. Nope, never mind. Too early. I think we've got to uh, activate Finish the, the other covenant thing. base, yeah. Yeah. So I just want I want to, I just want to see them fall in. <laughs> <laughs> that's always my uh, that's always my favorite. Yeah. I don't know if we'll be able to. Of course, this is also the mission where Sergeant Forge actually survives and will be found again by Rion Forge's daughter. Yeah, I guess we got to get rid of that hunter. <laughs> I'm in the sun. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Now we can watch the... No, nothing, actually. We can watch the resources fall through. Roger that. I love that line. I'm in the sun. Is <laughs> No, Forge, you're not really. But, okay. I'm pretty sure I am. It's, like, really <laughs> fucking hot. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this. This, uh... Light shield. In the game at all, or just in yeah. this sort of area? In in this area. Possibly in the game, but I don't know. They're on quite a few of the multiplayer maps. Uh, then I, yeah, I've seen them there. I just don't think I've seen it in the campaign, then. God, Ian, just not a true Halo fan, are you? <laughs> it, it's never appeared for me. <laughs> They only appear to the true reclaimers. I suppose. Mm. So, have you got lots of video coverage planned for, um, for Halo Wars 2? I do. It's actually what I'll be working on immediately after this. Yes, yeah, same here. <laughs> Apparently I can, un I can release the interlock right away. Yeah, that's nice. Huh. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Don't even have to finish the level. Technically speaking. There we go. And there it is. <laughs> Lovely. Where are those sentinels coming from? You know what? I'm just reminded that this remind, Or I was just thinking, this reminds me a lot of... Uh, Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah, find the shielded, that. yeah, shieldless area. You can only technically go through that that small circular opening. Yeah. So, hey, Star Wars is stealing from Halo. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, there was the comparison made with uh, with Reach, except you know, I because controversial you know, opinion. Was, Rogue One is better than Reach in every possible way, but uh, it kind of you know, is. Yeah, like I I enjoy experiencing Reach, but Halo, uh, but uh, I don't enjoy story. thinking about Reach. I, I, yeah, so that's why I had to say like experiencing. I should say experiencing the game. Yeah. Play. Um, <laughs> Emphasis on the play part, yeah. Mm-hmm. D- don't think about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's been seven years and it still still haunts us. Indeed. Some of those well, holes have still not been plugged. Well, since you were the last one, let's continue on and watch that fi- those final cutscenes. Oh, do I have to press the A button or is that you? No, I'm just, I'm just there we, okay. There we go. There we. Go. Wasn't sure if it would actually play or not. If I had to go load it up or something, but there we go. Oh, it's not playing for me. Really? Nah, I'm not rewarded with the cool cutscene. Well, pretend you're watching it with me. I think you okay. know what's going on. I could, yeah, I've watched it enough times. I can probably like. Yeah. Okay, so Cut is looking at the sun. Is he? Is he? Has he got dialogue yet? Has he, has yeah, he got that cool shot? A lot of course that takes us through the sun. We're gonna sling shot around it. Through the sun, just like shoot, just yeah. fly through the sun. <laughs> I think you mean around it, Captain. <laughs> It's a good thing that AIs, uh, you yeah. know, have quirks that they. Oh, okay, now it's playing for me for some reason. All right. Are you starting at the beginning, or is it... Yes, at the beginning. Okay, so you're way behind where I'm at, then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, it's so weird seeing old Cutter, as uh-huh. opposed to uh, Gideon Emery ISO, ISO Cutter. Cutter. <laughs> but uh, I do, you know, I am sold on Gideon Emery as Cutter. Oh, my God, yeah. His performance is fantastic. It has been. It absolutely has been. And, and Planet uh, Explodes. And Anders as well. Um, mm-hmm. It's the um, her replacement actress's name. I can't remember. I don't remember, but it was, that was a little bit of an easier transition for me, just because I know her from Mirror's Edge, and uh, I like already like I was I already liked her from there. She like, captured Anders perfectly as yeah. well. Like I know Gideon's in here as Jerome, um, but he is. Yeah, I forgot yeah, about that. But it, you know, it, Jerome has like very. He does very little, so. Mm. That's one thing I'm like I'm liking from what we're see what we've seen of Halo Wars, uh, two so far. Like no 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 spoilers on it. Just what's been publicly revealed is, uh, it he seems like a real character this time around, or at least mm. more of a character. Uh, the majority of the characterization was done in Genesis, the little uh, mm-hmm. art book which sort of set the scene for. For this game, but uh, yeah, in Halo Wars 2, there's distinctly more sort of going on with the characters. Yep. That's not to say that what this game does is bad with them, it's just that they are sort of, you know, archetypal in their roles and all that. Yep. So let me ask you, how much does it bother you that they go in uh, to cryo with their clothes on <laughs> and come out with their clothes on in Halo Wars 2? If only so we could see, like, you know, Cutter and Anders both standing there naked having a deep conversation <laughs> about loss and that. Yeah, you know. I wouldn't. Yeah, that, I, I love that in, uh, what was it? It was uh, Fall of Reach when. Uh, yeah. The very first piece of media yeah. is just these two people, like, standing there naked. It's Keys and Halsey just naked yeah. having a chat. Yeah. Well, see, now we know why they were into each other. It's like, hmm, yeah, yeah. Could, I can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> and Halsey's like, hmm, I'll yeah, overlook I your can problem. allow that. Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, like it, as much as that, like that one, I can usually just kind of overlook. But what always really bothered me is uh, Ford unto Dawn's cryo suits. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> so I guess it was, like, it was so early as well in the timeline. Yeah, I could believe that if it was going to happen later, but uh, yeah. that like was... I can I can accept that post war. Yeah, or hell, even uh, like uh, twenty, thought like twenty five forties and fifties, even though Fall of Reach still establishes that you have to go in naked. <laughs> Fall of Reach and the Flood. Uh, you know, it it would probably be questionable to have a bunch of teen actors walking around set nude, but well, I think they're yeah. all actually uh, older than their teen. They're just portraying teenagers. So I don't think any of them were actually under underage. I'd have to go back and look that up specifically. I, I I haven't thought about this subject to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't bother me a whole lot. Uh, you know, I understand yeah. why they have to do it like this. Mm-hmm. 
it would be great if we could, you know, adhere to canon 100%. But this is one of the few sort of like minor allowances. I'm like, yeah, you know, that yeah. that's fine. And I mean, technically, they can go in. They're just going to get like really bad freezer burn. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. You know, they're <laughs> badass. They, they don't yep. mind. Yep. That's breakfast for them. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's see. Oh, my mouse went dead. That's I saw it. a guy in the credits called Mike Coker. I thought it was Mike Coulter for a second. <laughs> oh, he was a programmer for Halo Wars. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> uh, I don't. Th- unfortunately, I don't think the legendary ending will play for us. Uh, I don't know if it does. If it does that by default, or if it does that uh, only for legendary. It's like that was one thing with uh, Halo Four. I think it like it, after you unlocked it on legendary, it would always play. Yeah, yeah. I like I that. It was good. Yeah, I don't remember if they did if that if that's the case for Halo Wars, but anyway, Speaking I'm sorry to legendary. disappoint you. You oh. did not make the longest episode. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, we're only at 39 minutes. I mean, we could shit around for like another cancel 20. this. We're, we're doing it again. We're already <laughs> filming it. <laughs> uh, legendary, that'll do it. <laughs> All skulls on. Oh god. <laughs> oh, I can barely do that for the for the shooters. I don't even want to think about that for, <laughs> for Halo Wars cuz Can we talk about um, Serena at all? Can we talk about Serena? Uh in regards to Halo Wars 2, no. 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 Though if you want to, though we can we can talk about can, her with regards to Tales from Slip Space though. Yes. So which is actually kind of thing. odd, but regardless. <laughs> I wasn't uh, wasn't best pleased with that. Personally. I would have rather had it in a game. Like, see, personally, I think it was a missed opportunity. I've talked about it a few times that they could have done like a three to five episode long audio drama, like Hunt the Truth from. Um, oh Sarita my god, that would have, that would have been fantastic. Telling that Great same story, the story itself, you know, is is fine. But I feel like a different format would have supported it so much better and brought. You know, brought the story side of the community better in like shared mourning of this character. Oh yeah, you're. I gotta say, you're you're spot on. And hell, maybe you could get the Eisenberg group to come back for that because <laughs> uh, they did so they did so damn well with Hunt the Truth, for, oh, especially dude. with what they were given. That like, uh, episode at the start of season two where Maya sees Ben at midnight. That's oh my god, still, that just still haunts me. I don't know if I said it in my review of that episode, but I I did cry when he started break when he broke down mm. like that like if I had been like holding it all back until then and then when he broke down I just like I had to pause the episode for a bit <laughs> <laughs> those performances really really touched you they were uh, so dang, damn yeah. good it and is. then seeing this character we had spent a whole like, season two with. Months. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like I want to say, like a good two months li- listening to his audio draw, his audio mm-hmm. law, you know, dramas, whatnot, and then he- to see his fate like that. Oh, yeah, God. that was. Glad like, they did it, but still. Oh. Yeah, that was the most excited I'd been, sort of like pre-release um, during an advertising campaign since Iris back in two thousand and seven. Yeah, fortunately, I never. Unfortunately, I never got into. I was. Uh, I wasn't in that involved so i didn't get into iris back then <laughs> ah i was a mere lurker on the uh, the b net back then uh, <laughs> i didn't actually join until 2008 but um i watched that whole thing go down like as it was happening and everyone just going crazy each week just like whenever adjutant reflex would post something like the most the most mine the most minor thing and everyone would be like what does this mean <laughs> I re- yeah i actually heard quite a bit from um our friend Mendicant Bias, uh, formerly yes. of the Halo Archive, quite a bit about his, because he he was pretty heavily involved with that back in the day. Yeah, he was. I want, I've not seen him for a little while, but uh, he seems to be doing well. That's good. Mm. Mark Just Warden sw- is the brute chief. Oh yeah, there you go, Gideon Emery. In additional voices. The uh, the credits are playing a different. Hey, rate Tim Miller me. was in in on this. <laughs> no different tim miller <laughs> but yeah no. face robot ringing rigging ah nolan north who played two characters in the yeah. same year 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Brian Bloom's in it as well. He wrote, the... um, he wrote Infinite Warfare and plays Varric in uh, Dragon Age. Oh, nice. We're coming to the end of the credit. I didn't. I didn't. I never expected to actually sit through the all the credits, but you know what? If it works out, it works. I am out. going to drag this out for as long as it's going to be. <laughs> you can try. Uh, you know, we've just got to individually thank every single person who made this game because it is. Hey, there's a- Mike Coker again. Yeah, it's an incredible yeah. game. So we're going to thank Mike again. Yep. There's Graham Devine. Marvelous developer he is. Oh, yeah. Like you could really tell how much passion he had for this project. From uh, Oh, my God. Yeah, from the Vidox. It, yeah. This makes like the closing of the ensemble that much more heart-wrenching, and you see the passion these guys had. Yeah. They put into it. Like, it's, I love hearing the story... Um, like how they, like they, you know, they developed this for like an Age of Empires port, and then uh, Microsoft's like, "Hey, why don't you put it on? Why don't you do a Halo game?" And they're like, "Oh, <laughs> sweet, yeah, let's do it." Imagine just like Microsoft turning up at your door, saying, "Like, you know, this thing you're working on? Yeah, okay, uh, it's Halo now. Okay, uh, okay, sure, why not?" Yeah. I do miss hey, this, these um, these thank you notes at the end of the game. I always like reading them with like Halo mm-hmm. Two and Three and the other games. They don't do them anymore, I don't think. I don't know. It's I I haven't sat through credit. Or I haven't really paid attention to credits in a while, so I don't know if I watched them for Halo Five or not. I remember finishing Halo Three and just sort of uh, you know the, for the first time mm. sitting through those credits mix of emotions and then seeing you know having that beautiful track that piano track playing while oh my God. all these bunch because that was it at the time you know that mm-hmm. was all we knew and this was sort of like the last sort of thank yous and goodbyes that everyone was making for this amazing trilogy yeah that like that was my first time seeing that when i was trying to get the legendary ending and uh yeah, special thanks to Joseph Staten, Martin O'Donnell, Harold Ryan, all the Bungie, and Jamie Grazmer, and Zach Russell. Zach Russell's the only name I don't think I know. Cause no, I don't, I don't know recognize. his. Jamie Grazmer, he's uh, he's with Marty at uh, yeah. Eyewire. Oh, it? hey, there it is. Something has happened. There you go. Uh, it's not playing for me. It's still going through the names right now. <laughs> You're a bit behind. But yeah, there was uh, the Serena. Captain, wake up. Something has happened. Ah. My amazing Serena voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. there we go, you know, for whoring out the franchise, supposedly. Uh, this was a good game. It was, a, yeah, it's fantastic. It's really unfortunate, like, it, it did so damn well. It, I, it sucks that it took so long for <laughs> any sort of sequel to be made. Yeah, but, you know, I think people will be happy with the sequel. I think so, too. I don't I mean, think it's going to be... I think people will approach it from maybe the wrong kind of mindset or the mindset that won't satisfy them the most. But I think people will be happy with it. Yeah. I think so, too. It's mm. a pretty good game. So, Thank you, Horace Piss, for joining me. It was That's an absolute pleasure. pleasure talking with you. And you. And even sitting through the credits was actually pretty fun. So. <laughs> that was good. We had a good time. and We did. Thank you out there for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this series. And you know, this will be coming out. We're recording on a Sunday, but this will be coming out the Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, I believe the 15th. That should be. So you have a couple days until Halo Wars 2. So, you know, go back, go and read up. Uh, so, go uh, watch my primer series or watch the uh, Halo Waypoint, Halo 101 on Halo Wars. There was, there's... Um, they made the comic that we were talking about, Halo Wars Genesis, free, and that's some great backstory. It's written by Eric Nyland, so if you want some credibility to it, there's a there's a nice name drop. Um, at, least, or at least partially written. I think it was it was him and uh, Graham Devine, but you know both good writers uh, for what they do. Yeah, Devine, uh, he made a whole load of just uh, backstory that didn't make yeah, it into the that, game. It wasn't necessarily canon. Yeah, it, it's absolutely really, really, really good. You can find it on Halo on Halopedia. I'll actually late, leave a link to the pay to the Halopedia page on it, which in turn links to all the stuff, all the um, entries. But the Halopedia page adds just a little bit of context to it, 
additional context so you can understand um you know what what it was written for and uh, all that jazz so uh, but yeah, it's really good. It's unfortunate that it's that it's not canon, but some of it does have pretty heavily conflict with uh, established mm-hmm. facts. Like there was uh, like one that re- I remember is um, uh, oh god, what I say I remember it now I'm drawing a blank. Was it the Forge one? Uh, no, it was. Uh, um, oh yeah, they were saying Spirit of Fire was actually the ship that had colonized uh, Arcadia, <laughs> but even though it was actually uh, built, I think after Arcadia was founded. And yeah, there's also the issue in the game that. Anders is from Arcadia, and that never really yeah. comes up when that's, when they yeah, go. That's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a holdover, but you know. Yeah, yeah. there's a really good piece in there, like about uh, Mary Cutter uh, slapping an a slapping the report. reporter. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, when when uh, the ship was declared MIA or, or uh, lost with all hands, sorry, which I think in that in that stuff is actually the the date they gave was like in the tw- was like in twenty five thirty one, not twenty five thirty four or something. Mm. There was a wrong date. I remember that much. Was, uh, like when I first discovered those, there were a bunch, a, a bunch of that information had made its way into Halopedia. So I started going through and removing all that. It's like, guys, <laughs> whoever added this, this isn't canon. These are uh, cool, but can't have that on the official Halo wiki. Mary Carter deserved better. Oh my gosh, doesn't she? Mm. <laughs> I would love to get a little bit of backstory about her. It's like, that's one of the things that really ripped me up about, uh, in Halo Escalation with a whole, yeah. with the whole Daniel Clayton's like, Oh damn it, Cutter. Why? I liked you, Cutter. I still kind of <laughs> do, but, do, but um, uh, I, you know, they can make it make sense. It doesn't make him like, you know, an evil bastard. It, it no, it's a moral sort of failing. Layer. It yeah. adds a, yeah, a moral failing, a layer to his character that may, you can't really reflect in a game the way yeah. you can in a different in a different kind of thought pattern. We'll see yeah. wherever it goes anywhere because if there's anything that's sort of overtly foreshadowing, it's Cutter's son saying, "I'll be there, you know, I'll see you again, Lord Hood, the day the UNSC falls," because we've got agents on every colony. Yeah, it's one of the things that's unfortunate. The NCA kind of got screwed over. Yeah, <laughs> something. But uh, anyway, so. We could keep on rambling forever, and much as I would love to, congratulations, this is now the longest episode, so you made it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just hit the 50-minute mark. Um, so with uh, openings, endings, uh, I think that should be, it should probably be pretty close to the longest episode. I don't know exactly how much uh, stuff I have to cut out at the start. Uh, Unlimited for... power right now. <laughs> Unlimited I'm just I'm just waiting like this is I'll I'll go edit this and it'll turn out to actually be like 45 minutes because ah. for some reason it's like ha you didn't so we've got a five minute buffer right let me just roll off I don't the material here <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> what kind of buffer we had I didn't pay attention but I do got to get off because I got to edit some Halo Wars two stuff which by the time this comes out you all will have seen so mm, I got to start writing as well yeah. Anyway, once again, thank you for joining me, Horace Piss. It was a lot of fun. No Always great talking to you. You too. And hearing that fantastic voice, please start <laughs> an audio series. I definitely should. I, you should. It's been <laughs> on my mind fant- a lot. I, you, know, you have yeah. just like you have a fantastic voice. It's it's you have the voice of a perfect voice for radio. It comes from reciting uh, the entirety of the series, just sort of from memory. Like Halo Force <laughs> Terminals, I'll just roll off in the bath every now and then, just like uh, you know, I can <laughs> recite it from memory. Just it's, yeah, my favorite. I love it. But, there yeah. you go. The secret life of Horospus. <laughs> <laughs> Defined by this damn series in every possible yeah. way. <laughs> there we go. We end in another two minutes to, to the yes. last time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna end it here because I'm gonna keep ramp. We're gonna keep talking. And as much as I love to, I do need to edit, end this episode and oh, and dang, get to, to editing. So thank you for joining me. Thank you out there for for watching. Um, not just this episode, but the whole series. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll leave a link in the in the description box below to Harrisbus's blog. He's done some great stuff, including a very a recent one. Um, at least at the time of this recording. On mendicant, on the identity of and origins of mendicant bias, mm. which, if depending on how things go out, I might actually release a video that references that because I had my own ideas for some MB video stuff. So we'll see. Lovely, I look forward to um, it. But yeah, but I got to write that before I continue the Halo Wars campaign, so I don't accidentally put spoilers in. <laughs> <laughs> Same with my, a banished video. Anyway, now I'm rambling. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this has been 
Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give a like and consider subscribing and sharing this video around. Also consider checking out Gamefly, with over 8,000 new releases and classic games for current and previous gen consoles, and even some older consoles, Gamefly is a great way to try tons of games without buying them. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash Halo Cannon to start your 30-day free trial.